Shalom. Back with part five. Let's continue here. All right. Have a cook, the second chapter. All right. And he is his death. Again, he is the son of perdition. All right. That man of sin. Okay. So he is the harbinger of death. You understand that? He's that red horse that take a piece from the earth that you read in Revelation 6 and 4. All right. And he does that with the sword, his blessing. Okay. And cannot be satisfied, he gather unto him all nations. Talking about his new world order. He's always had that in mind. You read about that even in Maccabees. All right, first Maccabees. I believe. Uh, what is that? One. And verse 41. I think it is in Maccabees. You read about it where uh, King Antiochus uh, talking about you know, the people giving up their rights, okay? You know, so that they can all be one. What is that? The world order. You get that? All right, so they've always had this in them. That's always been a part of their spirit and their makeup, okay? And heap it unto him, all people. Again, new world order. All right. Shall not all of these take up a parable against him, all these what? Nations. All right, a taunting proverb against him and say, whoa, destruction to him that increaseth that which is not his. Okay? Uh, Habakkuk. Uh, no. Uh, Michael. Okay? We go to Michael. Go to Michael. Uh, what is that? One or two? All right. Go to Michael. Two. One or two. Woe, which means destruction to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. And when the morning is light, they practice it, all right, because it's in the power of the hand. Who's that talking about? That's talking about your cabal, your shadow government, the Rothschilds, Oppenheimers, Rockefellers, all right, et cetera, et cetera, 13 families and all, okay? Amalek, the Amalekites, the head tribe of the Edomites, all right? Okay, and they cover the fields and they take them by violence. You see that? And houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man, in his heritage. Just like they stole our heritage. Right? As it says, what is that? Jeremiah 17 and 4. That we would discontinue from our heritage. Because that was beaten out of us. Alright? And it wasn't, I don't think, till what? The 1860s, they started to call themselves Jews. Right? So, you understand? You know, and it's explained. I mean, you know, go to Ezekiel 36 and 5, and it tells you you know, about, you know, uh, you know, Idumia. It basically really, uh, it, uh, it's prophesying the uh, Balfour Declaration in Ezekiel 36 and 5. How Esau, all right, has uh, taken over into possession the Lord's land. Okay? Okay, and has cast it out for prey, meaning for war. You understand that? Just go read Ezekiel 36 and 5. It'll tell you that. All right? All right, with just more, <laughs> more proof showing you they're not the people. Okay? All right, those 1948ers. All right? So, um, again, and for how long? And to him that layeth himself with the clay, uh, that word there is a batya. All right, and that's talking about debt. All right? Heavy debt. Okay, and shall they not rise up suddenly and bite thee, talking about the other nations, and a weight that shall vex thee, and thou shall be for booties unto them? So what we're reading here between verse 6 through 8, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. This is all basically talking about, you know, the evil and wickedness, you know, the stealing of lands, okay, the wealth, the resources, enslaving a people, putting in a central bank, right? Federal Reserve, you get it? All right, well, let's go to a precept. What is that? 
Yeah, Isaiah. Thirty-three and one. Woe to thee that spoileth. Right? Woe, destruction to thee that spoileth. All right? So I'm talking about America, Babylon, the great, the whore. All right? And thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. And when thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. By who? The other nations. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they, the other nations, shall deal treacherously with thee. See that? All right? Again, you know, he who diggeth a pit shall fall in it. He that rolleth the stone, it shall fall back upon his own head. Okay? You pretty much read the same thing, Obadiah, one chapter again, verse 15. All right? Right after all they've done, right, the child fall upon their own heads. Right, let's do that. Give it to you, Obadiah, one and fifteen. All right, for the day of the Lord Yahweh is near upon all the heathen, and as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. See that? All right. Okay. All right, there you go. Okay, verse 9. Woe to him that covereth an evil covetedness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house, cutting off many people, right, many nations, and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe, destruction to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. How is America founded upon? How Steve cometh but to steal, kill, destroy, to rape, rob, commit murder, genocide. Columbus came here in 1492, removed the landmarks, right? Put our people in chains. Took 1,100 of my people, the tribe of Ephraim, put them on four Spanish ships, shipping them back to Seville, Spain. Only 300 survived the trip back to Seville, Spain. Obviously, we know that most of those would be women, and they were right. Okay? So, how was America founded? They tell you on Christian principles. Now, is that true, or is that a lie? That's a lie, right? That's a label. Okay? That's a lie. America is not founded on Christian principles. Is that what Christians do? All right? To come, steal, kill, and destroy? To rape, rob, commit murder, genocide? Is that is that the definition of being Christian? To remove the landmarks? Steal the wealth and resources? Okay? To enslave another nation of people? I don't think so. All right? And you know so. You all out there know better, all right? All right, let's go to a precept for this. Let's go to uh, Nahum 3 and 1, all right? Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. And the prey departeth not. See that? Got that? All right. Woe, destruction to the bloody city. And again, America, Bible on the great. It's all leading up to her destruction. And that's all over the scriptures, culminating in Revelation, uh, the 18th chapter there. All right. But it's all over. You know, Isaiah, the 13th chapter. Isaiah, the 34th chapter. All right. Isaiah, uh, the 47th chapter, all right, Isaiah 63, all right, who is it that cometh from, uh, from uh, Basra with thy, you know, who is it that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? And again, they're talking about Yahweh Shai, and when he gets it, it's parabolic, metaphoric, when it starts speaking about the wine press there, 
of all the uh, blood spattering that the Lord's going to be doing. Okay, and he's not going to be coming out of his chariot to do that. He's going to do that with that concentrated laser fire from the chariot, all right? Okay, Isaiah 63, and you have, uh, what is it? Uh, Jeremiah 49, 50, 51. Um, you have Ezekiel, all right? The uh, 25th chapter, verse 12 to 14. You have Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, all right? Um, you have Joel, the second and third chapters, Okay, so you see this stuff is all over the scripture. You have it all throughout, you know, pretty much the book of Revelations, all right? And in particularly uh, culminating in uh, Revelation 17 and 18, all right? The destruction of America, Babylon the Great, all right? The Hua, you understand that? And as America goes out, our kingdom will be brought in. Okay, Yahweh Shai's kingdom, and we are co-heirs to that kingdom with Yahweh Shai, all right? All right, uh, so, you know, the War of Armageddon means the end of America, Babylon the Great. You understand that, people? That's what World War Three means, the ending of America, Babylon the Great. All right, verse 13, behold, is it not of the Lord, all right, of hosts, of armies, all right, and... That's what host means, it means armies. And again, the Lord has many armies, right? The angels, okay? You know, the angels in the chariots, the ICBMs are part of the Lord's army. That's part of his army, all right? And they're his, okay? He created the uh, scientists to create them. And the, uh, the chariots, what Esau calls UFOs, have flown over the missile silo site. They turned on the computers. So who do you think controls them. Who do you think they belong to? They belong to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right? That's part of his army, plus also his people. You know, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, which we read about in Jeremiah. All right? All right. So, behold, is it not of the Lord Yahweh, the host of armies, that the people shall labor in, a, in the very fire, and the people shall... Uh, worry themselves for uh, every vanity, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. All right, and that's that's been taking place, and will continue to do so. All right, all right. Uh, as it says, uh, what is that? Give me a minute. This is Second Ezra six twenty seven twenty eight. For evil shall be put out, and the sea shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. And that's what's happening, people. That's what's going on. All right. Let's move on. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Esau is filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy force can be uncovered. The cup, that cup of dreads, that cup of slavery, that cup of abominations, right, shall also pass to him. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, see? And shameful spirit shall be on thy glory. See that? All right? Give me a minute. This is Lamentations 4, 21 and 22. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, thou that dwellest in the land of Uz, talking about America, Babylon the Great. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. See that? And thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, so the Lord is letting us know, you know, the curses are being put on them, as you read in Deuteronomy 30 and 7, and he will no more carry thee away into captivity. See that? I repeat, he will no more carry thee away into captivity, or captivity, we're at the end of it, and he will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom, will discover thy sin. Give me a minute. All right, this is the close out, Jeremiah 49, 13. I have sworn by myself, saith uh, the Lord, that Basra, capital of Needham, talking about America, Babylon, the great, shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual wastes. All right. Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. And as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighboring cities thereof, saith the Lord Yahweh, 
No man shall abide there, neither shall the Son of Man dwell in it. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. Shalom.